What felt like the whole world was watching this week is the most hyped NBA prospect in recent memory had the sneaker explode and left with the knee injury. We know now it's a grade one sprain. He's day to day. So there's a sigh of relief. But it is called into question once again the role of college athletes, the relative fairness of amateur athletics. Yesterday, Boogie Cousins was the latest NBA player to weigh in. He said one thing with which I completely agree. Give a listen. Well, knowing what I know now, college is bull. College basketball and NCAA is bull. So, uh, my advice to him is do what's best for you and your family. And obviously, college is. You can't really, it does nothing for you at this point. Uh, you're proving you're, you know, the number one pick coming out. You're proving your talent. You know, you're ready for the next level because it's happening. I think the highest ticket for that UNC Duke game was. Twenty-five, thirty-five hundred dollars. It's like the lowest. Though, like how much is that? How much does Zion win? For see? That's who they're coming to see. So how much does he get? Actually, who does it go to? How does it benefit any player on that team? But if they were to get twenty dollars in the free meal, that is bad kid. They get a, they get a bad rep, uncoachable, bullets, whatever the case may be. So it's bull. It's been bull. So that's the part of it that I agree with completely. By calling the whole thing BS, that becomes the headline, and everyone sort of ignored the particulars of what he said. If there is one thing about this that bothers me the most in, in this entire discussion, it is the demonization of the players who do things that are not criminal acts, and they are treated like criminals. Terrell Pryor was treated like a criminal when he came out of college. The man sold a pair of pants at the end of the day. So that's the part of that that I completely agreed with. It got buried under most of the uh, west of what he said because he said the whole thing is BS. Now, David, I want to throw together your credentials. You're an NBA champion. You were three-time A-10 player of the year, and you're going to be the COO of the Historical Basketball League, which will aim to pay college athletes while also providing scholarships. So you have a lot of background in this. I will give you the floor first. As you've heard this Zion thing and all the conversation about amateurism, what is your first and most important thought? My first thought is that the athletes should be paid. Um, that's why we think that the, uh, the league that we're creating is going to work. Um, again, I saw Zion two or three years ago in Las Vegas in the summer bring 6,000 people to a convention center. They were charging $30 to park, $25 to get in. And I remember looking at him after that game, like it was 10 layers of people standing watching him at a convention center. I watched him after the game. Dude had on the most basic. And I remember saying to myself, then this was maybe three years ago, this is, this is not right. And it's something that, again, when you look at the value that he's created for himself, um, I mean, he should be able to participate in that and have opportunities for himself. Quickly, would family. that issue be mitigated if they were just allowed to go directly from high school to the pros? If he could be in the NBA today, would that change the dynamic for you? Yeah, for him. But there are tons of other kids uh, that get uh, they get left out. But definitely him, for sure. So how do you manage that? Because there's all the other kids. Mm -hmm. there's, there's the Zions of the world that are once in a lifetime, once in a generation type mm -hmm. player. And then everybody else, how do you pay them and how do you keep it equal or maybe not equal? Yeah. Well, the market is there. And obviously the way the system is constructed right now, it, it doesn't fit. Um, but the market for guys like him, um, players, uh, again, someone like myself who was for faced with the decision as a sophomore, I was thinking about this the other day. At that decision when coach left and I'm like in the air, my entire career is up to the AD. Like, I hope you hire the right coach. I hope you bring in the right people. Um, the options need to be there. Opportunities need to be there for kids. Well, let me get my other guys in here. Sean, the news yesterday is that it's a grade one sprain. That is right. the best news we could have gotten out of this. So what is your takeaway as far as him and the way this will impact Duke's season at this point? Well, look, he's going to come back. It's not going to impact him that much at all, I think, long term. I think he's, they're going to be fine. They're going to be a favorite to win the national championship. But I want to go back to what you're saying, though. And, and with all due respect, I disagree. Uh, if, if you allow those kids that are good enough to get paid, and the number of kids that are good enough to make the NBA, you're looking at maybe four or five that are good enough to get there. There is a value to playing college basketball. The amount of exposure, the brand value, the brand recognition of playing on ESPN or any other cable network is extensive. Trey Young's value last year when he went to Oklahoma, we came in talking about Michael Porter Jr., Marvin Bagley, DeAndre Ayton. We were talking about Trey Young. Two months into the season, he was the face of our sport. And subsequently, 
he made an eight-month investment on himself. Yes, he didn't get paid during that eight months, but he is certainly <clears throat> getting paid now because of what he accomplished at the college level. Final word. It all goes back to choice. As a high school senior, you should have the option to enter the NBA draft. You should have the option to play in his league. You should have the option to go to college. You should have the option oh, to go overseas. Right. When those get limited, that creates a level of frustration to all of the people that has gone through the system. Oh, and by the way, you're looking at somebody who basically <laughs> – had his banners taken from the rafters and didn't get acknowledged, I would love to see my number hanging in the rafters, yeah. okay? So college exonerated me, literally. So I understand the frustration as much as anyone.